Hi y'all. Are you new to having a griddle? Trying to figure out the best way to use the griddle? Well today I'm going to show you some of the tips and some of the tricks of things that you need to know, especially as a beginner, before using your outdoor griddle. Today I'll be going through a lot of the tips and tricks uh, of using a griddle. I am going to save my best tip slash trick to the very last. One of the first things you need to do, even though the box in the manual says that it comes in pre-seasoned, is you need to season your grill. Please watch the particular video and it will show you exactly how to do that. Hi y'all, Don here with Southern Backyard Cooking. If you like my video, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also ring that bell That'll give you notifications for any time a new video comes out. That way you'll be able to watch it after the first chance that it becomes available. Okay, our next tip is to level the grill. One of the things that's really nice about this member's mark is that it has levelers on it. It's the only griddle that has these. So I can lift this up a little bit to get some of the pressure off. And you can see I can turn this to level. Now it has this on both sides and what I want to do is I want to level it by leveling the griddle. What it allows it to do, we want the grease to flow toward the front because that's where my drip pan is. It's all going to go up here. We want to level both sides so that it doesn't puddle on one side or the other that it comes towards the front. All right, the next best thing that you need to do, in my opinion, is by wind guards. You get a set of four, has two for the front, one for each side. That prevents the wind from blowing the flame and creating hot spots on your griddle. The other thing it does, and this is the part I like the most, is these shelves are great, but without these wind guards, they get so hot that it will melt the plastic on my squeeze bottles. For the most part, while I'm using the griddle, I don't ever use these before I had the wind guards. Now I can actually use them. All right, my next tip is to get a cloth cover for it. This will keep some of the rain out. It'll keep a lot of the dust and dirt out and keep it looking a lot newer. In addition to the cloth cover, get one of these metal covers. This one is a Blackstone brand. Blackstone brand's particular covers fit perfectly on here, even though this is a member's mark griddle, but it will prevent anything from getting on to the actual griddle surface. Any kind of water that might get through the cloth cover, anything of that sort. When I pull it up to use it, it makes a perfect wind guard for the back so I don't have to have a wind guard on, along the back. All right, my next tip is to use medium low heat to preheat. And it usually takes about 10 minutes to preheat. So on mine, I turn it on, I get my first flame, I turn the others on to get the flame, and then turn it down to medium low, all the way across. And by doing that, it will allow it to heat up evenly, heat up gradually. It'll prevent warping. Warping happens on almost every griddle, if, especially if the griddle top is cold and I crank it up to high and try to preheat on high. These griddles will get 500, 550, 600 degrees. So there's no need to ever cook on high unless I'm in the middle of cooking something and the temperature drops so low that I need to raise it up quickly. And then it's only for a minute or two and turn it back down. Okay, once it's preheated, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna to get to know your griddle. My griddle, the front part of my griddle is cooler than anywhere else. So it's real important to know that. So things that I'm going to cook that necessarily don't need to be as hot, I can cook toward the front of my griddle. Okay, the trick to getting food out all at one time is to do what's called zone cooking. So zone cooking means I'm going to 
cook at different temperatures across the griddle. Different things cook at different temperatures. I don't want to cook, say breakfast for example, and have all my hash browns done, all my sausage done, or all my bacon done, and then start cooking eggs. Or have the sausage get done, the bacon get, then gets done, and then I put my hash browns on, it gets done, and then I cook the eggs. By doing that, I'm spending so much more time actually cooking than what is necessary. Plus, the cook foods I cooked first are cold, time we're ready to serve. So what we can do is zone temperature. We want to learn the zones and learn to cook accordingly. One of the things you also want to do is using oil is to reseason my griddle as I'm going. What that means is just because I start cooking and it's seasoned, that doesn't mean I don't have to add any oil to any of the items that I'm cooking. I want to make sure I'm adding that as necessary. A big tip to cooking is using the accessories. So some of the things you have to have, you need to have oil, you need to have water, the water we're going to use for some spot cleanup. You need to have spatulas. I have two different kinds, holes, no holes. And these are not uh, beveled on any side. They're just regular type spatulas. If I'm using and cooking a hamburger, I have a particular hamburger spatula that is beveled so I can actually scrape it off the grill. You need to have a scraper to clean up. Meat presses. These are great for cooking bacon. If you like bacon and you don't want it all wavy, put, put a couple slices down and put this on top of it. It'll be cooked straight, flat, and perfect. It's also great for cooking sausage patties and hamburger patties. You need to know the temperature of your griddle. Having an infrared wireless th thermometer, you can tell exactly what temperature and how everything is set up. You also need an instant read thermometer so I can tell what the temperature is, especially when I'm cooking something like steaks, something that's thicker. I want to know what the internal temperature is. Chicken, I want to make sure it's 165. And for those hard to reach things, you need a set of tongs. So all those things are really important and have. There are other accessories you can have also. Some people like to have a little dome lid that they can melt cheese on the whatever it is they're cooking. The biggest trick to cooking everything and having it all come out ready at one time is to do planning. So plan what you're going to cook, pre-assemble all the items. So if you have items that need to be cut up, have those cut up prior to starting to cook. Uh, if I'm going to do scrambled eggs, maybe have the, the eggs already in a bowl broken to where I just have to mix them up and put them on the griddle. But any kind of thing you can pre-plan is really great. The other thing is plan what zones you're going to be cooking. For example, sausage cooks around 350 to 400 degrees. Eggs, 250 to 300 degrees. So make sure you have your zone set up for these different type of cooking. And if you do this plan, everything will come out great and you'll have it all done at the same time and ready to serve people. Okay, one of the other things you want to do while I'm cooking is check the temperature of each of my zones. Make sure they're exactly where I want them to be. If I don't check the temperature, I may be cooking eggs at 250, whereas I'm really cooking them at 350 and they're coming off burnt, they're hard, rubbery. So really check your zones and make sure you know what temperatures you're at. The best tip I can give you more than any other tip is to subscribe to my channel so you can see and get first shot at every video as soon as it comes out. So I hope you enjoyed it today. Until next time, y'all have a great one.